Hi, this is my first super space vlog and it will be similar to my reflections video in that it's going to be much more conversational and I will be sharing personal thoughts and ideas and my personal experience in this process of sharing super space theory with the world. Um, and as in that video, my disclaimer will be that it is being recorded outside, so there may be background noise. So I wanted to make a super space vlog, a video vlog, because this experience of putting super space theory into book form and then beginning to share it with the world has been a pretty big deal to me considering that I first had the breakthrough realization about the core principle that size equals distance at fundamentally smaller levels of quantum physics. I first had this idea, um, this realization back in 1997 and first tried to write it down in a coherent fashion in 1999. So this has been with me for a very long time. And part of my um, sort of concern with sharing it was that because I'm not someone in the scientific community or a mathematician, that even though I ha believe I have articulated the core principles clearly, that I would not get credit for this um, breakthrough theory, this fundamental principle and realization that the fourth dimension lies in the direction of the very small, that when we move into the realms of the subatomic, we are no longer getting smaller, but moving in a fundamentally different fourth spatial direction which is the fourth dimension. Now this particular core principle has never been articulated in physics in any um, area of science. I know this because I have been following physics and studying physics and following physics news and science news for the last 25 plus years and in a sense waiting for someone to state this. Now we have had, um, I'm going to close this now, we have had um, some ideas which talk about, like for instance I read an article where someone was talking about how when we move um, back toward the Big Bang, um, and actually, let me bring up, I had uh, something here. When we move back toward the Big Bang, mathematically, you can look at it as if space is getting larger rather than smaller, mathematically. So this is one, one of my realizations, is that the math is not saying, when we move into the subatomic realms, the, the mathematics is not speaking about things getting smaller. That's an interpretation. And so people have sort of intuited this, but they've never actually had that realization. So people can say, well, the math, you know, could be looked at as the universe getting larger as we move toward the Big Bang, but they're not actually saying <laughs> that, they're not getting that realization that actually when we move into the realms of the very small, whether we're looking at it as moving back in time toward the Big Bang, whether we're looking at at it as moving inward in the curvature of gravity toward a singularity at the center of, of a black hole. Literally, we are at some point no longer getting smaller, but moving in a fundamentally different fourth spatial direction. That has never been articulated. That has never been realized. And that's very hard to comprehend at first. It, might even sound like nonsense, but it is the truth, and I've studied it and looked at it long enough to know it's absolutely true, and it will be recognized in the world of physics in time. But whether I get credit for that, or how much, 
is um, will be seen with time. I will say that I know because I have studied this that if someone else quote comes up with this theory in their own way I guarantee you that there will be no um, there will be no um, record to show that they had any such idea before July of 2023. I can guarantee that. And when I publish the deluxe expanded version of superspace theory, I'm going to um, have an appendix where I show some of my early ideas as well as um, scans of some of the early printouts from 99 where I hotmailed the theory to myself as a form of copyright. Um, and so, yes, I do feel like, because I'm putting it out there and I'm getting hits on my videos, but no actual responses in the sense of someone approaching me, I do feel like someone else may just move in their own direction with it, and if they're able to articulate it in a more rigor rigorously scientific um, way involving math, then they're likely to get credit for that and should get credit for any mathematical model that they create. But I would hope that um, there would be acknowledgement of the inspiration being superspace theory because superspace theory is unique and that core principle is a unique one. We have looked at the fourth dimension um, and I'm not going to draw my little pictures because I've done it so much but We've looked at the fourth dimension as something mysterious. You know, I was watching, maybe I can just look for a video. I will be um, surfing the net and pulling up videos, but I will um, be doing this in terms of crit critiquing the idea. That's a physicist. I would love to have luck at my stuff. There are a few. Um, so I believe this is fair use. Um, but, yes, I was looking at a video. If I ramble a little bit, that's the point of this vlog, is that I can just sort of stream of consciousness this. But um, I was looking at a video of Carl Sagan talking about the fourth dimension. Um, obviously a brilliant gentleman. In discussing the large-scale structure of the cosmos, example, in this ink pad, and time goes on, so it terribly confuses, utterly outside his experience. He and he goes into the flatland model, which I go into, it, which is a wonderful model way, for a lucky you take a line like a segment dimension. and move it at right angles to itself an equal length. That makes a square. Move that and with their vertices connected. Now, if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right. Now, let's take this three-dimensional cube and project it, carry it, through a fourth physical dimension. Not that way, not that way, not that way, but at right angles to those three directions. I can't show you what direction that is, but imagine that there is a four. So that was it right there, where he says at right angles to these directions, and I can't show you what that direction is. That's where the fourth dimension has been seen as mysterious. And when we speak of time as a fourth dimension with space, four-dimensional space-time, time itself is seen as mysterious. And so this is the breakthrough realization of superspace theory, showing that the fourth dimension is in the direction of the very small, and it's literally lucking us right in the face. And I said I would not draw, draw my little pictures, but you know what? I lied. I'm going to draw my little picture, okay? <laughs> um, let's... Uh, this green is fine um, so as anyone who's watched any of my videos or read the book knows 
when we're talking about the fourth direction as being in the the fourth dimension as being in the direction of the very small we think of our universe as a 2d field or sheet as in the flatland analogy and so in the flatland analogy something moving from the fourth dimension poking into that sheet would appear as a tiny dot in superspace theory i say well that is literally what the realm of the very small is doing. The realm of the very small is the direction, is the place where these fourth dimensional realities come from, if you want to look at the flat land analogy. So when we get into nucleons and quarks, quarks always look like chocolate chip cookies to me the way they draw them. Um, you know, other, maybe a, uh, the Higgs boson, just for fun. <laughs> uh, and even though super strings may not actually be a real thing, let's do super strings and quantum foam. And so we're moving, as we move into what we think of as the very small from our universe, we're moving actually just into deeper dimensional fields deeper dimensional fields which grow more and more energetic and so when we ask where is the fourth dimension um, compared to our our space our linear which is actually this is 3d but it's a 2d analogy compared to our space it's inward and sure if we have uh, an object we can go inside of it and we can go to smaller levels but when we reach fundamentally smaller levels of the subatomic we are curving in a fundamentally different fourth spatial dimension fourth spatial direction which shows the fourth dimension is in the direction of what we think of as the very small so that's the core breakthrough realization of superspace theory that has not been seen or articulated before. It has not ever been articulated before July of 2023. It's, and it's a fundamental shift in our perspective that we will need to make if we are to understand physics. So, when uh, you know when people try to describe the fourth dimension because we're not seeing it as the direction of the very small we have all these complex ways of um, trying to look at it in terms of a four dimension uh, yeah like a square in four dimensions um, but this is still really all linear. It's all really just, this is still all 3D. It's just trying to look at it. But we're really going nowhere with this. As, as fun and cool and fantastic as this is, this is all still flat. It's all still flat. What this represents, um, and I wish I could, this would be fun to, Let's see if it actually saves as an image. But like this here, so when they're talking about like all these different dimensions, what actually, and I think I can open this with GIMP, which can be GIMPy, <laughs> but has worked for me. So this is a flat picture because we're not understanding where the fourth dimension is, but actually, We'd be looking at, you know, if this was in a flat sheet, this beautiful design was laid out on a 2D sheet, these points would all represent, could all represent points going inward, inward in this fourth spatial direction. And so we create all these complex patterns in 2D representing 3D to try to describe 4D. But in fact, 
until we understand that going into the very small is that fourth direction, then we won't get anywhere. And it also helps us, as I've described in detail, um, it helps us to understand time because time is motion through that fourth dimension, through that fourth direction. Um, and so all of these things, these hyperspheres, I look at this and I see that we're just creating these incredibly complex patterns to try to describe what the math is saying when the math is actually talking about inward. Inward. That's what the math is actually saying. And I'm not a mathematician, but I know that that is the, what the math is actually saying. As a matter of fact, you can see how this actually is going inward, you know. That's what the math is saying. The thing about math is that there is interpretation. Math is what I like to call a language of peer relationship or a language of the ab abstraction of peer relationships. So there is interpretation involved. So say for instance, and this is something I will develop more in, in the, the expanded deluxe edition, but say for instance we go um, you know, one, two, three, four, you can look at that as larger and larger size, or minus one, two, three, four, smaller and smaller. But think of it as, um, and let's just get some GIMP going on. <laughs> um, and this is, again, this is sort of an aside for sure. Um, but so we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five. You can look at it as, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller. Or imagine if you say first, second, third, fourth, and so on, and I can't use, you know, draw with my mouse, then these could just be seen as different levels, like floors of a building, right? So these numbers could represent levels just as much as they could represent size, and it could be the same going the other direction. So when we're dealing with quantum physics, so macro universe deals going in to fundamentally smaller sizes, which aren't actually small, moving in a different direction, you know, that's the whole thing. The math isn't necessarily telling us that these levels here are getting smaller and smaller. It's just speaking of a direction. That's actually the better interpretation, that the math is speaking of a direction rather than things getting smaller and smaller. We don't have to see the subatomic as getting smaller and smaller. I know that's hard to, um, um, it's hard to wrap your mind around, but, okay, that doesn't work. Um, let's do now. Um, because what we're doing is we're examining things, um, we're examining things, and, and it obviously, when we examine things, say, with a microscope, we're seeing things inside of our body. We look at our body, you know. Um, so we have, you know, if we look at someone, <laughs> and we look at our body, and we see cells, and then we see the cells are made up of you know, molecules that are made up of atoms that are made up of quarks, right? But in uh, what I will expand on superspace theory, but what I touch on, you can look at this as connected, connected fields going deeper and deeper into the superspace or the deeper block universe. And it's like we're a lens in a way so we are connected to these different energetic levels, right? So when we 
like an electron microscope, and I'm going to make an absolutely ridiculous little shape, which looks nothing like any kind of microscope ever, and then I'll make a little man staring into it. I'm an incredible artist, by the way. <laughs> you know, our vision is actually peering deeper into deeper levels, right? You know, yes, there's a connection, and yes, the deeper levels create what we experience as mass, but that doesn't mean it's all just bunched together in this single field. I, I, again, that's hard to comprehend until you comprehend it. But, you know, let's even say atoms are here, but then you get into the subatomic, and then we're moving in, and our electron microscope, microscopes are like you know, shooting little tiny observation thingies, electrons, whatever, deeper, right? So we're moving in, and so now we have nucleons, and then chocolate chip cookies, which we call quarks. I wish everything was made of chocolate chip cookies, though, by the way, even though I don't eat a lot of sweets. So you could look at it like almost the hologram analogy, which I do use and want to develop more, is like um, all these things are like connecting or sh uh, shining upward or something at our our sheet of space and so we just understand it it's all inside of us like all this stuff is inside of us inside of a rock inside of a you know of an apple um, but actually as we get to the subatomic, our observational tools are peering deeper into this fourth dimensional direction. We're looking into the fourth dimension when we peer into the subatomic. It's right there. It's staring us in the face. And let me just pull up another one because I do go over, um, I like blue better. Purplish blue is fine. Um, you know, so like if you have a, it's like a wall. In, in my book, I talk about if you're trapped in a sheet of glass and you're a flat person and you see this ball and you say, oh, it has smaller and smaller and smaller portions. But actually, this is extending outward outside of this sheet of glass that you're looking at, and this is one of the pictures in my book, slightly better drawn, you're going, look, it's a ball. Actually, I use the analogy of the moon. Here I'm going to look at it as a tunnel. This could be a tunnel going outside of the, of the glass, and you'd think of it as a ball with smaller and smaller portions, right? But it's actually a tunnel leading in a fundamentally different direction than your 2D sheet that you're stuck on. So you can go like this and this, up, down, left, right. But you don't realize this is actually leading into fields or other sheets of glass beyond your dimensional field. So literally, this represents something way down here that's not small. It's distant, right? So that's a tunnel. That's exactly what the direction of the very small, the subatomic, is. That's it. Right there, staring us in the face. When we gaze inward deep enough, we are looking into the fourth dimension. That is the principle, breakthrough theory breakthrough principle of the theory of superspace. Um, and so for me, um, having that perspective, I look at all things through that perspective. Um, and so when I examine ideas of the fourth dimension, I'm always seeing this, how um, we're just missing that, so we're creating these linear sort of flat versions which are complex but they're not actually showing us where it really is 
math shows the possibilities of a fourth dimension, but there's no actual evidence yet. Albert Einstein believes space and time made up a fourth dimension. String theorists give a view of what it could be. So obviously Brian Greene is a great string theorist and a, an amazing scientist, but obviously this is something he does not recognize, that the fourth dimension is the direction into the realms of the very small. Um, so uh, that wasn't quite what I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, so that's um, been, in a sense, I don't want to say frustrating, but it's been my um, my experience of seeing how people are trying to create these theories. Like um, one of the things, um, smallest particle, is when we look at particles as being smaller and smaller and smaller, we think there's going to be an end point. Um, and let's just pull up GIMP again because it's so fun. Um, file new. So that's one of the issues with our understanding um, or our lack of understanding of the fourth dimension is we're always thinking like, okay, so here's an object. Let's just do a person. And I really can't draw with my mouse. <laughs> so, and so we go, you know, there's a cell, then an atom, and then a quark, and then something smaller. And we're always looking for smaller and smaller, and we think there has to be a final, right, final thing, because it can only get so small, right? And we create up artificial smallest points, such as the Planck length. But you see, when you see that our universe, in a 2D analogy, is a single sheet with, or field with deeper fields beneath it, moving in the direction of what we think of as the very small, there doesn't have to be a smallest particle. As a matter of fact, the energies moving through these fields probably come from some field of just absolute energy that's still just moving to infinity. So that's one of the things that um, I've, I've seen is that this sort of quest for the smallest fundamental particle is, um, is mistaken in a sense, because there won't be a smallest particle. Um, and so when we're going, you know, like say the Higgs boson, which you know, the God particle they call it, you know, so what we're doing is say we have this Hadron Collider, and this is an interesting little analogy I make, is that it's almost like we have this tool, we're digging deep into here, it's like we're digging holes, deeper and deeper holes with the extreme energies we create. And we're seeing, oh, here's a smaller particle. Because in superspace theory, particles are not excitations of fields. They're holes in fields, energetic holes, which can be seen as excitations. Here's a deeper particle. Here's, or here's a smaller particle. Here's a smaller particle. Here's a smaller particle. Like we're going, you know, burning this pit into the dimensional fields, and we see, oh, a particle appeared and then disappeared as we, like, tore open a deeper field of space. You see what we're doing? There's no end to this. It just will become, it will see more and more energetic phenomena. I actually wanted to make a little cartoon, and I probably will someday. Um, but I wanted to make a little cartoon, and I can't draw here, but I wanted to have, like, two professors talking, you know. Um, let's make them have glasses. <laughs> um, and one, like, questioning whether they, or why they should believe, you know, they found a fundamental particle in, in that professor going, oh, no, but this one is teeny tiny. <laughs> uh, <laughs>
I don't even know how to spell Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. Oh, but this one is too tiny. Like trying to say why this one would finally be the final smallest particle. <laughs> and um, that's just a funny little joke I want to make. Because in a sense, that's like this quest is always to, fi uh, to find a fundamental smallest particle. Well, there is no smallest particle. It's a direction. The direction inward is a direction. It's not getting smaller and smaller. You see, if, if that's true, which it is, you see what we're doing? We're completely mistaken in our search for a fundamental particle. So even if superstrings exist as vibration, you know, showing that matters are forms of vibration, that's fine. But those strings aren't small. They're vibrating in these deeper dimensions. Um, they're not a f smallest uh, cons constituent or, you know, smallest foundational particle or string or whatever. It's, um, it's something existing in these deeper fields. Quarks, the smallest particle in the universe, are far smaller are far smaller and operate at much higher energy levels than the protons and neutrons in which they are found. You see how things get more and more energetic as we go in. Um, so this has been, and let's just go back to the idea of the fourth dimension. I'm just, this is my theory, so, but, um, Uh, obviously no one has come up with the idea that the fourth dimension is in the direction of the very small. But, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things where it talks about um, the fourth dimension. At least theoretically, there may be a h higher dimensions besides our normal three. Um, but they just don't understand where it is. They think it's in some mysterious direction or curled up. That's one thing, you know, curled up so tiny it, we don't notice it. It's, so we're really looking at things from a flat perspective. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, Lisa Randall, who wrote Warped Passages. I think she's an absolutely brilliant physicist. And she, um, she did work... Um, on large-scale extra dimensions as fields or as, I don't know, brains, planes, um, you know, that can exist parallel to our universe. That idea has occurred, like in the idea of the, um, what's the idea? There's one where, like, two brains or fields collide and that creates the Big Bang. Um, but they just don't see it as the direction of small. Um, and so the idea that there could be dimensions lying alongside our 3D universe, that, that has been um, suggested. I think it's a cyclic universe model. Let's go to that, since I'm not really getting anything really clear. Um, theory. I guess they're saying it's a theory. Cosmic evolution, according to which the universe undergoes endless cycles of expansion and cooling, each being with a big bang and ending with a big crunch. That doesn't actually explain it, because, or at least it doesn't explain the version which I've looked at, um, which has to do with fields. Um, and I may be mistaking which uh, which hypothesis that was. Oh, here we go. The big bang. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, so this is it. So it's where um, okay, the picture went away, but you see the picture. So you know, see those two these two fields bumping into each other. Cosmic expansion, the universe today. That's as far as we've gotten because we can't see here comes the gimp. <laughs> Um, we can't see that, yes, 
there are these fields lying alongside our own three-dimensional universe. That is possible. Field, just like in that picture we just saw. Wavy energy. Oops, it bumped us. There you go. So if we just see these fields as existing in what we think of as the direction of the very small, wow, I can't write with this, <laughs> then suddenly this all starts to make sense. If we have greater energy deeper down, boom, energy, boom, energy, boom, energy, you know, more energetic, right? More energetic, and I use the term entropic to say more entropic, more entropic. That is this same idea of large-scale extra dimensions lying alongside our own 3D universe, except we can say exactly where they are. They are in the direction of what we think of as the very small. And this, this describes a lot, especially when we look at this overall, what I call the block universe, or what actually in the book I term super space. This multi-dimensional super space we can start to see things in a different light. One of the things I talk about in the book is that they are connected, so it's like a galaxy is in a sense embedded in, in its connection to deeper fields, and that's why um, things stay in place rather than dark matter. And then, of course, when we see this whole super space is moving, and that that is what we experience as time, then we can understand gravity in a new way, which I already described how, you know, the whole, you know, heavenly bodies, just like particles, are holes in space. This is moving, so something traveling in a linear direction, this will move up over it. So that's why it curves inward, and even if it's stopped by a, by a um, body like the Earth, it doesn't just then float around. It sticks because this is moving in the direction of time, which is a physical direction of the fourth dimension. Um, so that's, I think, good for this video. Um, just describing it a little more casually with a little bit more internet use, and um, I've been looking at, you know, fourth dimensional things, just, but I already went over that, how it sort of tries to describe um, things, but it's just from essentially a flat perspective. Regardless, um, yeah, a little bit more casual, um, vloggy with a little bit more personal thoughts, talking about some of my hopes and concerns. And I really do hope that people in the physics community, as eventually, however much time it takes, as this concept that size equals distance at fundamentally smaller levels of physics as this is embraced, I do hope for some recognition. Because again, like I said, this, this idea has never been clearly articulated or articulated at all before July of 2023. And I think that is a pretty big deal. Because if we come to see this as the truth, that the fourth dimension is staring us in the face as the realms of the very small, that is a pretty big deal. It shows how gravity curves into the fourth dimension. It shows how there's these um, multiple fields underlying our 3D universe that it show why quantum particles are the way they are, that they lie at deeper levels within this deeper multidimensional superspace. I think there's a lot of ideas which will transform how we view these phenomena, which we are observing with our tools, but we're not understanding what we're observing because we don't see the fourth dimension right there looking us in the face as the realms of the very small. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching.